Good morning, world. Good morning, YouTube world, at least. Just getting set up here. We've got Freddie in his kitchen, um, but he's just doing a few things. So, hello. How is everyone? Got some peeps watching, which is wicked. Just going to turn the notifications bell off on my phone because that gets annoying. Hey, Richard, Tori and Freddie in quarantine. Yeah, I know, bad, right? Uh, I'm not sure if Freddie's back or not. I'll just see. When I'm in mute. Yeah. Okay. So, everything I'm cool. <laughs> so Freddie will be with us shortly. Um, how is everyone today? I know, I don't know how I feel about that title, Richard. I think you'll need to speak to Freddie about that. That was his idea. Although it's not untrue. We are both technically quarantined in our kitchens while we go live, right? Okay, I'm just going to try something. Uh, I'm going to see if I can read my comments about that title, Richard, Oops. I think you'll need to speak to Freddie about that. That was his idea. Just got to mute my phone, but I'm trying to see if there's a way. Oh, damn, that stand gets rid of chat. Okay. Apparently, you know, hi, Ruth Walton. I'm going to make you hungry now. <laughs> oh, your computer's set up on the kitchen counter too, Richard. It's kind of handy, isn't it? You know, like I used to go and sit over at like either my dining room table or in my little study nook and... I didn't get anything else done, but I can sort of play other YouTube channels or, uh, you know, TV shows while I'm cooking dinner or I can study. I quite like studying at my kitchen bench. It's a nice height. Um, I've got a study nook and they put a little desk in it, like a shelf for a desk, but it's too high. <coughs> uh oh, someone. <laughs> Someone's unmuted himself and is saying, hello, world, I'm here, Freddie, hello. No, you're supposed to Corona, is that you? Freddie. You need you? to sing. You, no, you're supposed to say, Corona, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Corona, do you see me? Corona, are you in me? <laughs> I'm going to correct. <laughs> I'm going to create a little bit. We'll get into trouble for making fun of it. But, you know, it's not worth getting hysterical no. or panicked about. It's better can, to laugh. Here's can I the tell point. you, it, Here's if you have it, that's the last thing you need to do is be negative. I mean, you. I mean, whenever someone's sick, you always want to cheer them up and help them feel better. Yes, it's a, it's a dry cough. <laughs> I'm parched. And you're, I'm not sure how I feel about your sound. I'll turn my speaker up a little bit. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm on my my Bluetooth headphones. I, I just wanted to know if my um, if my is is it better now or not? Yes, it is way better. Oh, perfect. Okay, so then should I take this off or should I go back to the old mic? The mic's fine. Oh, perfect. Okay, then I'll well, stay here. I mean, it's a bit blurry, but it's okay. Is it better than my normal mic? I can't compare them without hearing the other one. I can't remember. I think it's not as good as your other mic, actually. Okay, then I'll switch back to the old mic. Give me one second, ma'am. Uh, I'll cool. be my mic and then I'll be with you, the, you folks in a second. A few pokes in a second. Well, we're just chatting while um, the Groovers are arriving because there's a lot of stuff out there about coronavirus and um, especially lots of stories about people stockpiling toilet paper and hand sanitizer and stuff like that. But... The reality is it's quite possible most people on the planet are going to experience quarantine. And while it's good to have those things, what about things like, you know, nutrition, food? Um, also, if you are trapped at home for a couple of weeks and you've got kids, you want to make sure you've got some ways to entertain them, right? Um, so we thought rather than, you know, go down the list of um sickness well yeah all yeah. the vitamins and stuff there's plenty of information out there about that but we thought it'd be a good good fun just to spend an hour talking about some of the things that we can either get up to while we're quarantined i think youtube channels are going to be a very important um source of information for people don't you freddie 
can we just tell the truth? We're just here to get the view. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we well, talked, yeah. but no, but actually we were sitting to each other and we really were thinking, but can you imagine it? Like every time I read my friends who are on quarantine in China, they're all like, I'm dying of boredom. I am so bored. So I was just thinking to myself, why don't we entertain people who are bored? I mean, let, well, let's be realistic. Yeah. I mean, if you are sitting at home and if you don't have a good internet connection, then you are going to be dying of boredom. I mean, when was the last time someone bought a book? <laughs> oh, well, I buy books all the time. And I also volunteer at a library, so I bring books home with me. But, you you know, it's a good point. And I was thinking earlier today as well, Freddie, like that game we used to play, that Pictionary Online game, we can do stuff like that and stream it here on the channel and people can see you in action. Oh, but... Uh, oh. Okay, we could... We could, that's true. We're going to have to keep thinking of new things to do on the channel each time. Now, Richard says, off the back of my comment yesterday, I went shopping this morning, Mount Hutton, Lake Macquarie, New South Wales, zero toilet paper in Coles or Woolworths. Lucky I stocked up last week. Yeah, lucky you. Also, there is, um, I mean, I've got a lot of coronavirus updates. I've got the, you know, the constant scrolling um coronavirus updates happening at the moment it turns out that tom hanks got coronavirus on the flight to australia how would uh, they know that well they they know from how long it's been incubating apparently yeah but it could have also been in the airport i mean it could have been a a, a number of places oh i, I know i'm, I'm just saying, california was a high though it's just running through some headlines but it reminded me richard's comment reminded me of another headline which is Bunnings. Oh, straight to Lane Kelka, who is on the Bunnings are selling um, you know, when you go into a public toilet, they've got those huge rolls of toilet paper. They're only two ply, but they'll do the job. You can buy them for about 42 bucks at Bunnings. And How apparently would... one, one roll will last a household a year. A year? Yeah. Well, I guess when it's sandpaper. Um, can I read you off the the top Twitter headlines for Australia right now? Yeah, go for it, Groover. Well, how, how soon do you, uh, how long ago do you want them? I have up to 36 minutes ago and up to an hour ago or more. We want the more recent headlines for a quick chat about them, a little update, a bit of information, and then we'll get into the quarantine games. Okay. And stuff. The, the top 10 are Australian GP. Second is COVID-19. Third is Friday the 13th. Fourth is Yiya, Yiye. It's hashtag Y-I-A-Y-H-I. -I. Uh, number five is Daniel Andrews. Number six is Bill Bowtie. Number seven is Download. Eight, Cricket Australia. Nine, Paul Little. And 10 is Mikel Artia. Yeah, I don't want those headlines, Grover. We want the coronavirus headlines. Well, that was number two. I, oh, I, th I was just reading off the top 10 uh, Twitter yeah, no, I think, well, I'd rather do some quick little updates on... Okay, we do have breaking news for you now. Shit, we just shit. had confirmation. See, the people are interrupting. So, yeah, the Grand Prix has officially been cancelled. They were originally, earlier this morning, this has been a very live story this morning with lots of tweets. Originally they said it was being cancelled. Then they said, no, it's not being cancelled. We're going to run it, but we're not going to have any audience. Like, we're just not going to have a crowd. And okay. Can I just put in? You know, when I read that GP, I thought it was general practitioners and doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Australia's getting rid of all the GPs. <laughs> well, I thought maybe there's a shortage or something. That's why I was like, oh, well, maybe that's a problem. But, okay, it's about yeah, the so the, the Formula One Grand Prix has been cancelled. They And like I said, it's been, I've been watching that all morning and it's like it's not happening. It is but without an audience, without a crowd. Um, the death toll in Italy has passed 1,000. Wall Street has halted trading up to 1.6 million people in new south wales could be hit with coronavirus um there's a some new travel restrictions in australia but nothing like trump on that trump's decision yesterday has pissed a lot of people off i get the new yorker um the daily i subscribe to that and they rip him to shreds for what he did yesterday because he didn't consult with any other countries he just went and went ahead and did it and even though, you know, these travel restrictions are a great idea, um, he's been accused in the New Yorker of being ridiculously arrogant and, in their words, unequal to the moment. A president 
unequal to the moment is the headline in that article. Well, it's, it's a very odd situation when you think about it. Um, I have a, a few friends that were traveling around Europe at this moment, and I was like, oh, I didn't know you guys were in Paris. And then they tell me, oh, we're leaving today or tomorrow because we don't want to be stuck. So it's not a lot of panic with people trying to, to get out before they get stuck or they're assuming. But then I spoke to a friend who's a pilot in in Paris, and he told me that actually they have uh, flights um, still going to the U.S., but I, after Friday they're only allowing um, Americans and uh, uh, what is it valid valid passport holders and um, uh, people with resident visas. Yeah. So those so there will be some flights still leaving Europe for the U.S. There will. But there will. No but I actually went back and listened to that statement again. I must admit yesterday there's I'm still sort of multitasking with this because I'm making notes and doing all sorts of stuff and I didn't really listen to him. But he's very racist. He calls it a foreign vi virus. Um, he also blamed the European Union for spreading it. He also made a statement that it was very low risk for Americans, which is not correct. Like, the, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. But if anyone's not subscribed to The New Yorker, read that article, A President Unequal to the Moment. It's pretty interesting. Back into chat, uh, Ruth says that her neighbours have quarantined her and no one will deliver toilet rolls. Ruth, I read um, yesterday that anything that needs to be delivered, like groceries or anything like that when we're quarantined, mm -hmm. the rule of thumb is just get people to leave stuff at your door. So... Maybe try a neighbour or someone and just ask them if they could at least just put some rolls of toilet paper out on your doorstep. But the, I don't understand that whole thing because it still can rest on on objects. So what's the whole fear of like not being in contact with people? I mean, wash your hands, don't touch your face, mouth, ears, nose, eyes. Yeah, no, <laughs> but I'm just saying with Ruth's example, if her neighbours or if people are too scared to drop toilet paper, then they can just leave it out on the doorstep. That was what I'm saying. Like if there are people that are freaking out that if you open the door and say hi to them and you're standing mm -hmm. one and a half metres away from them, yeah. that they're going to catch it, then just say to them, hey, just drop it onto my front doorstep. I'll grab it later. Yeah, because I was just thinking, I mean, you know, during Christmas time in the U.S., uh, that's like the best time for all the thieves to start stealing everything. So, I mean, can you imagine with this going on, how oh, many people can be claiming, oh, I have the virus, so I'm going to take this. And I think that already happened in Florida where a man robbed a bank and he threatened to cough on the people. And there's also a lot of talk about, you know, addicts that are going to be stuck at home and they're not going to be able to access their fixes and all sorts of increasing violence and raiding and so on but look in australia at the moment if someone leaves a couple of rolls of toilet paper on your doorstep even though shops are selling out you'd like to think if if your neighbor leaves it on your doorstep and says it's out the front see you later just go and grab it would you yeah. really ask your neighbor for a roll of toilet paper i would my neighbor would drop some over and i'd drop some over to her too good morning john of Oof. good to see you yes it is friday the 13th in Australia, Richard, it is. I don't know my neighbors. Sorry. Oh, actually, no, because one moved away. I did know them, but yeah, I don't know the rest of them. I'm sure they they see me and things, but um, I couldn't imagine. How do I ask them in French? Imagine, can I have a roll of toilet paper? <laughs> I mean, how awkward would that? Pardon be? Um, le toilet paper. Oh no, no, I know how to ask for it. I, oh. the, uh, well, we've got a we've got a community page down here though that if anyone's really desperate for anything, they can put a note up, and then anyone who's got it who can drop it down to them, um, they'll private message their address, and you know I'll drop stuff down to a stranger's house. I don't care if I've got something that someone else needs. I'm happy to do that. But you know, I mean, this, this is an opportunity for the planet to either come together as a community who gives a fuck about each other. Or be complete dickheads, you know. And I'd I rather think, be in the former list than the set, the the latter list. I think right now it's 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 really nice about that whole um, post that you see all over social media, where people saying, for all those people who are hoarding pasta and toilet paper and everything, this don't look down upon people who are fleeing war and famine and things like that. Because I I always say it, and I'll say it again and again. There were people in war zones who one day were living life normally and literally the next day the world was turned upside down for them. So, I mean, you, you never know when it could happen to you. 
No, true. But I looked at a lot of, uh, you know, pandemics that have hit the world historically and, you know, millions of people have died before because of pandemics and it was really interesting seeing how towns and cities and communities dealt with it, but there was definitely a strong sense of community that came out of it, which was pretty heartwarming, but then there were also mass graves because they just have to get rid of the bodies quickly. Um so they were walking around with these, like a metal detector, but it was like a bone detector and putting markers where there might be a body buried from, you know, the bubonic plague or one of those previous pandemics. Good morning, Bridget. Bonjour, she says. Bonjour. But you have to imagine what happens to the economies of the world since it's so focused on consumerism, of buying things. So if there's less people and everyone's sick or people can't work or people can't leave, like I, like earlier today, cause I was buying a, a new microphone. I was just thinking, you know, there's a lot of online retailers. So if no one is at home and no one, or everyone's at home and no one is working, I mean, how are all those packages getting delivered now? Oh, they'll, they'll wear um, hazmat suits if they have to, to get stuff delivered. But you can't, if you're not supposed to leave the house, how do those people go to work to do that kind of job? I mean, can you imagine wearing a hazmat suit and having to, you know, hurl boxes all day? No, I think it would be bloody hideous. But I guess this is why this is such an interesting thing that we're witnessing in our lifetimes. I mean, there have been huge pandemics in history, but this is the first thing of this, um, or at least of this amount of publicity because, you know, swine flu, mad cow disease, um, SARS, they yeah. were all big issues as well. But this is why I'm finding it so fascinating. Hey, Bridget, thanks for sharing my link. And while we're on that, John Avoof is also doing a thumbs up for everyone to get in there and give us a thumbs up. And um, hey, Morgan, how are you doing? Yeah. Can't hear you know anyone for a few minutes but wanted to stop in and say hi. Ooh, Richard, um, how much a face, a face mask in Australia? Is seven, well, I guess, yeah. It's like no, the... No. No, no, no. Before you go down that tangent, the face masks are on 750 bucks. There's a stimulus package in Australia. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. Yeah, but I was going to say in France, the price of face mask was 35 And the moment the coronavirus started spreading around Europe, the, the same box cost 400 euros now. So I could see it actually being a box of, of face mask, of the 3M face masks that are you know, certified for coronavirus. Look, it would be, but I mean, if people haven't realised from all the information that's out there about how pointless it is buying face masks and they spend their 750 on that, if they can even find some to buy, then they're dickheads. I mean, the whole point of that stimulus package is to boost the economy, which sort of goes back to what you were talking about before. <clears throat> and we go to see things like this happening, you know, the government's giving people money to make them go out and spend it and keep the economy afloat. They did it during the global financial crisis as well. Yeah, they did that in the US, but I think we got a thousand in the US. Yeah, well, that's um, that's probably seven fifty Australian. My money's worth more than yours. <laughs> Hi, Ivory. Saying good day from South Carolina, easily Ooh, South Carolina. Carolina. Nice to have you here too. So let's, um, because we wanted to have some fun, we've got about 40 minutes to muck around. We thought yeah. we would rather than, I mean, there's a lot of information out there about things that you need to put in your house, you know, to plan for a two-week quarantine if necessary. Um, they're saying one in five Australians will need to be self-quarantined. They're saying one in five Australians will get coronavirus today. Oh, I didn't see what it said I mean, in the not article. Today. They did, not today, they did but that, that's a, an article on the front of our news sites this morning. I'll see if I can bring it up. Uh, um, lots of um, all the cruise ships are saying that's it. See you later. Um, empty planes have been flying around the world because I didn't know this, but if you're not flying around the world, you lose the prime positions in airports to offload passengers. But... What's the point? There's no passengers to offload. Well, there there are always going to be people flying about and and everything because you know there's there's always going to be someone with enough need and enough money to go wherever they want and do whatever they need to do. Because I like right now I was just thinking I I wonder 
what the the really really wealthy are doing right now are they hunkering down in their bunkers are they you know are they are they buying you know gallons full of of, of sanitizer and making everyone who oh, works in sanitizer? I bet if you looked in their garages, they'd just be filled with rolls of toilet paper. Um, so Disneyland has closed um, oh, for two weeks. A Virgin Australia staff member has tested positive for coronavirus. So you know, um, do, you, do you reckon that the like a Disneyland is closing down for liability reasons or really just for for safety? I think it's all for safety. I just and also who's going to go wherever there's a crowd at the moment? You know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's use the last 40 minutes to, I can't find this article now about the one in five. Maybe it's been taken down because it wasn't accurate. Um, but, I mean, that's a pretty standard statistic. You know, the reason Italy's quarantined is because a shitload of people have got it. It travels very quickly. Um, but let's talk more. We wanted to have some fun. And we're all in quarantine together here on the YouTube. So let's talk about things that we're planning on doing um, to keep ourselves entertained while and if we're quarantined. Should it be with our neighbours or without our neighbours? No, if you're quarantined, your neighbours aren't fucking coming over. I've, I've actually got a friend coming over tomorrow and she said, what can I bring? And I said, you can't, I won't let you in the front door if you don't bring toilet paper, which is a joke because I've got enough. But um, I, I was saying to her that I think, People, if you know, if 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 say where I live, say we're not, it it doesn't take off. Although I think we've had a another case confirmed here in the last twenty four hours. But um, if it doesn't go crazy and people are still catching up, like I'm meant to be going into town to have dinner with some friends tonight, and I'm sort of like, oh, I don't know if I want to. But um, yeah. but we were saying, yeah, if you have people over for dinner parties and stuff, you know, you used to bring a bottle of wine. Now you've got to bring a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> um, as far as Richard comment goes, I think. Since you guys are in the Southern Hemisphere, you should look into getting sugar because with sugar you can preserve things and salt. I mean, buy those and, yeah. packets of salt because, you know, with salt and water, you can preserve the harvest of, you know, you, you can literally pickle anything. You know, three, what is it, three tablespoons of salt per liter of water and you're pretty much good to go to let the, the fermentation process start. I mean, that's what I do. I, I love to make pickles and different things. And and yeah. uh, I even learned a, a Russian recipe to pickle tomatoes, but there are some people who say it's not safe to pickle tomatoes and, and things like that. Well, I saw a woman yesterday on YouTube who's pickling eggs. So she's hard boiling eggs and pickling them. And also vinegar, obviously, if we're talking pickling. Yeah. It's good. Uh, well, no, that's not. A, well, you can pickle. There's the, the a quick pickle, which is like the vinegar way, and but there's also the traditional, like you let it really ferment yeah. to the like. Yeah, there is. But I mean, I think to me, I, you know, yesterday when I was, um, oh, sorry, I had these pop up videos. Why can't you turn that off? Um, uh, when I was doing some shopping yesterday, I was looking at all the fresh food and going. Realistically, it's fresh food that's going to be the hardest thing to um preserve or keep you know so people are probably going to be resorting to the tin tomatoes frozen beans um you can sort of freeze stuff. pretty much anything though i mean a lot of I, I, a lot of people look down on frozen you know veg and frozen fruit but i mean it tastes literally the exact same and if it's been done industrially it's been flash frozen so it really is a, a really good quality Oh, yeah, but I'd rather buy stuff that's been properly frozen than just look at a, you know, a bag of beans that I've had in my pantry, in my um, crisper for a couple of days and try and freeze it. I've never had any luck freezing beans. What? Why not? don't know. They just don't freeze well. What kind of beans? Green beans, string beans. Oh, but those freeze excellently. But, I mean, they're also really cheap to buy frozen already, so. That's what I'm saying. I just would rather buy a bag of them already frozen. And, I've, I mean, I have got... Um, I did buy some bulk meat packs yesterday just to have some meat in the freezer, it, you know. I think it's if you've got a bit of extra money with your weekly shopping, just buy a few things like that, like rather than buy the normal pack of meat that you would get, get the bulk one um, just in case. It doesn't hurt. And at the end of the day, you're still going to end up eating it and using it at some point, even yeah. if you don't have it quarantined. But um, I always 
salt, 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 because salt can be used to preserve so much. And my next thing is, uh, well, when summer arrives here, is I want to make beef jerky or even biltong. Yeah, yeah. Yep, all that sort of stuff will be good as well. Um, yeah. and breaking news from Ivory, the U.S. jumped from 1,242 to 1,663 infections in a day. Um, so, yeah, it's doubling every three days, and that's scary. And that's pretty much what's just happened in Italy. It was, you know, what the, it trickles, and that's why there was an article yesterday saying, Australia, you might be a bit late, five days late in um doing stuff but I mean I looked at you know what what is set up for Australia and I'm fairly confident that we'll be able to manage it as well as any other country but um it's because of countries like Italy where the rate just shot through the roof um and the other thing is there's a lot of people walking around Australia at the moment I've mentioned that um statistic from the Australian 60 minutes story where for every coronavirus death there's at least 80 to 100 other people that have got it so in Tassie, for example, where we haven't had um, a death yet, but there's three people that have been confirmed to have coronavirus. It might even be four now, actually. Um, but that means there's, you know, four, roughly 400 people will have it. But didn't you have a, a headline in Hobart where there was a man confirmedly, uh, confirmedly confirmed um, infected and he decided, fuck it, go and club in? Yeah, yeah, there was. And, and can you imagine how you're sweating and you're just... Yeah, he was people cold. passing by people. I mean, it's a if it's a crowded nightclub, it's just like that basketball player who thought he was being funny and he he was rubbing. Well, he, it was kind of funny though. He was rubbing all the microphones and everything, and then it turned out he was literally the confirmed case of having the virus. So now the season is finished. Yeah, so I just think he's a dickhead. But um, I'm going to cam up. I've I haven't turned my camera on. Oh, I was wondering where your camera's not off. Look at hold on. Let me turn mine on too. I can't have you stealing all the spotlight. <laughs> I've just got to prove we are in our kitchens. Hey there, gorgeous! Look at you in your beanie. You look so cute. Oh, thank you. I feel naked with that. I, I like your hair though. My hair? Yeah, look at oh oh oh. Big hair, big hair. Have a nice big shake. Now look, we're going off our topic. The point was, oh. what are we going to do? Oh. We have okay. to be quarantined. Now, I'm starting. I'm going to say puzzles. Get some puzzles out. I, I love a puzzle. Do you want to see the puzzle I've got in case? I, I already owned this. I haven't started. I normally do one every summer, and people, when they drop by, like my sister, just stand there and do it for, like, 10 minutes. Um, but I've got these. I love these puzzles. They're Australian. They're 20 bucks. Um, but, yeah, I've already got one ready to go. I'll go and get it. It's so cool. I'm going to say that the people should start to clean their houses because, I mean, imagine if you get sick and you pass away. You don't want people finding all those unmentionables. So get rid of those if you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's the thing. I think it's a really good chance for people to do some serious minimalizing and getting rid yeah. of shit. So I've got um, this little one, which is they don't take, I mean, they take about an hour to do, but my sister gave me this for Christmas. They're these little yeah. um ladybird books uh for grown-ups and it's a little puzzle of a hipster are you sponsored by this company no i'm not so these are jenny <laughs> sanders and look at it it's a combi and i've done previous ones she does puzzles of combis vw beetles um what we used to call panel vans there's some on the back um, but these puzzles, yeah, so grab a puzzle. But my sister, we gave each other op shop Christmas presents this year. She got me another Jenny Sands one, Sanders one. Check out the car, right? It's a red Ford 351. But look at the back of it. The price tag, $5. <laughs> Piece of not counted. This is going to fuck with my OCD, I swear to God, but I so want to do it because I'm going to get to the end. There's going to be like eight pieces missing or something. So you want to sit at home and play puzzles by yourself? Um, yeah, I'll happily do a puzzle by myself for sure. So that's my one, puzzles. What's okay, your one? For me, um, since it is March and we're coming up on garden season, it is already, oh, well, I'm already late. I usually start in December, January when I start um, planting my seeds yep. because 
Um, you know, I like my chili peppers and I like my my things that take forever to grow. So I have yeah. to start then. And then the last frost date is in May. So me, if I'm in quarantine now, I'm back in the garden and I'm preparing because next week is also the bees hives need to be split. And yeah. Yeah, I gotta I gotta set up the hives and get the bees ready for springtime. I love there. that yesterday we both had thought about getting seeds because it's so nice. I mean, I've got if you can see in the background there, that's mm -hmm. a jalapeno plant that's got some peppers on it. But um, I'm gonna buy some herb seeds because I I can handle eating tinned food and you know. Um, making like say a bolognese or something but if I can't have some fresh parsley on top it's never it never tastes as good can I tell you what I grow in my new greenhouse well I had it before um, I have avocado trees and pineapples and chili peppers in my greenhouse but I mean I had them before I had the greenhouse um, cool yeah, that's right in my chat we're getting a few ideas now I'm also with ivory on this one write a book Begin to write a book. I actually have started writing a book and the thought of being home quarantined and having an opportunity to spend some time on that will be very exciting. But also... you remember my romance novel? Hey? you remember my romance novel? No. The first one I wrote. I wrote three. I haven't... I don't think we've ever talked about your romance novels. Yes, I sent it to you to, to proofread it before. I can swear you, I have a... I mean, but this would be like... Oof, this would be a very long time ago not to not to date us. <laughs> I know that you sent me some scripts to read, but I don't remember oh, yeah. romance. Yeah, this but would be I really love that, I love that idea of ivories. I think that's awesome. Morgan right. romance novel. I'm adding, I'm doing a list because you know, we want to tell the world how cool our subs are and all these cool ideas we've we've come up with. So Morgan's got a couple of murder mystery boxes that she hasn't done yet. And I think that um murder even, mystery. Yeah, so like Freddie, you and I just chatting about subscription boxes. I did subscribe to a murder mystery box. Um what is it? I don't know what that is. The game, it's a game that you play and there's a murder and you've got to sort of solve clues and or find clues and work at solve it. It's a bit like playing Cluedo or what you would call Clue. Uh, um, but they're like a standalone game. The one that I had, a lot of the components were online and I tried to do it live. It didn't really work. But it was sort of like an escape. You can get escape room ones as well. Um, but any board games, I think, too, like, um, I mean, obviously, if there's only one person at home, you'll probably be playing a lot of solitaire, but there's a lot of online games, and that was another thing we were chatting about earlier, even if you and I can find another version of that Pictionary game we used to play, we can go live and play it, and everyone can see how good you are at it, Freddie. I liked when we played Scrabble together. That was actually quite fun. Yeah, well, I mean, I play, I still play um I used to play Scrabble, but I actually play backgammon online quite often. Ooh, I like backgammon as well. I'm always looking for new games. I, I get bored of games. Um, Ooh, that's kind of cool, think, Ivory. I think Ivory hates puzzles that have waterfalls and leaves, I'm hoping. Um, <laughs> is is and, Ivory male or female or non-conforming? Ivory's one of our newest subs, but Ivory built a house. Ivory's a carpenter. Remember, Ivory? maybe Ivory's a dude. Oh. Well, maybe you know, you know, Ivory's gender, non-gender specific. I love um, I, cool. For a while, I was building um, a lot of wood things, and I built a mini hail ba hay bale. bale yeah. One? Yeah, did I ever show it to you? It was it made because I I was someone gave me a rabbit and I was worried that the rabbit wouldn't have anything to eat in winter, so I started um, making mini bales of hay that were literally this big. How cool! Like, yeah, and I have they're all in the the greenhouse now, and the rabbit decided she was going to live in the greenhouse for the winter, and so she burrowed down, and now she just eats. I let her. She was in a cage, and I just said, I'm just going to let her go free. Okay, on that too, um, I want to, and now Ivory's saying yep and yepers, and I don't know if that's Ivory's a female or a dude or non-gender specific. But just on that, um, while everyone is running around buying supplies for their house, don't forget your pets. And if you've yeah. got cats, get extra kitty litter, um, get extra that's food funny. for your pets because 
I know for a fact if I was trapped in my home for two weeks with Biscuit and I didn't have extra kitty litter or food for her, she would go nuts. So um, please make sure if you've got pets that you're putting them on the list and and put food on the list, people. Like it's great to go and get all these hand sanitizers and stuff, but if you're self-quarantined, no one's coming to your home. You know, I mean, it's good to be washing your hands properly, but um, people are forgetting about nutrition. Stock up your pantries. And even if it's just buying a couple of, you know, extra UHT milks, some powdered milk, things like that, just chuck that into your shopping trolley. Um, but don't forget your pets. Oh, so Ivory's a dude. G'day, dude. Oh, speaking of pussy cats, it's yeah. Kitty P. Carmen. Kitty P. The moment you started talking about cats and food, she was like, I'm here. <laughs> Is she fluent in French or English? She's fluent in French, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Oh, she's quadrilingual. quadrilingual. And she speaks, she speaks cat too. See, Biscuit's only fluent in Vietnamese, so we do have a bit of a communication barrier, but um, luckily I know how to say, Zing Chow Biscuit, and she goes. Um, Richard, I read today, because I, I asked Tori about that yesterday, if, uh, if it was true that dogs could be infected or if they just had the virus on them. And it was reported, apparently, I didn't see that the World Health Organization say it directly, but I saw somewhere else where it said that, um, no, they can't be infected. Yeah, and it did emanate from um, the bats that were being slaughtered in a... But I, I, I read it was snake that it oh, wasn't... No, it wasn't bats, what are they? The, I'd never oh, heard the, of them. Pangolas. The panda gings or whatever they call What are they called? Is it, I think it's a pangola. Pang, yeah. I know it's um, the rarest animal you can see in all of Africa. Huh? It's the most because when you go on safari, um, there's you know you can see the big five, but but to see something truly rare is a peng. I think I think it is a pangolin or a pangola. A pangolin. It's, it's a pangolin. Like a, a, a pangolin or scaly anteater. Um, but the I thing. See. You know they were being slaughtered in a wet market, um, and the virus that's and the and people were eating the meat, and that's where the so the obviously the pangolins had it, but it wasn't fatal to them. So what but, if it's actually an ancient disease caused by global warming released from the ice? <laughs> I'm gonna write that in my book. Right. Well, I want to go back to our. Um, ideas for quarantine we've got 23 minutes left thank you ruth it is the pangolins and um i thought in the uh it might have been in one of the shows i was watching there's a show on netflix called pandemic i put it on last night out of curiosity that was the one where i saw them doing the metal detector over the mass grave um mm. but I, I lost interest because they're talking about how we do for a pandemic and it's like we've fucking got one can you do a recent episode so i went to their most recent and they still had an even though apparently it's a 2020 series they they weren't talking about coronavirus they were still talking about the flu yeah but we have to imagine those shows are made at least six months in advance so correct but that's what i'm saying i, do, I wouldn't recommend you watch that i lost interest but i did see a show somewhere where they talked about the pangolin and apparently the pangolin is actually uh kind of self-evolving to save itself but i can't find anything about it in this everything article. is always self-evolving even yeah, here but no, no, no but it's happening rapidly and they're sort of saying it could be something to do with the fact that they've been living with this virus so they're revolting it's like planet of the pangolins so it says in here that nucleic acid sequences of viruses taken from pangolins have been found to be a 99% match to those of the virus which causes COVID-19, SARS, and is responsible for the current pandemic. So wait, they've been responsible for two pandemics? Well, I yeah. guess SARS wasn't a pandemic, was it? Yeah, they've been, yeah, they're connected to SARS as well. So, um Dirty little, critters. dirty little critters, dirty little critters. Um, we have to wipe them out. I'm just kidding. Well, no, that's the problem because yeah, they've been let, there's been a lot of mass um, slaughters which happened after the SARS outbreak and oh, well, that's um, the really rare animals actually. Yeah, yeah, they're not they're not doing well. The pangolins. 
the most hated critter in the world at the moment. And, mm. you know, if you go back to that article about Trump in The New Yorker where he was blaming, saying it's a foreign virus and blaming the Chinese and the European Union. Uh, dude, blame the pangolin. Well, it's not the pangolin's fault. They didn't say kill us and eat us. Oh, true, true, true. I'm <laughs> being a bit silly. Like, can you imagine Trump standing up and we're banning all flights between America and Europe because of the well, dirty new pangolin? Last, what, last night when we were speaking about this, I was thinking to myself, he looked scared, though. I was wondering if he was worried he, he might have, because of those two people who were infected by him. I wonder if he was nervous because of that or what? I, I didn't. Um, he looked like he hadn't done a poo that day. That's what I thought. He looked rather constipated and robotic. He's wrong. But, yeah, the, I highly recommend people subscribe to The Daily from The New Yorker because um, the, it's it's an interesting perspective and I find the articles are so beautifully written, but they're, they're pretty scathing of Trump yesterday, I have to say, his announcement. And in particular the fact that he has made this decision without any consultation with any other countries and you know this is, what I, this is what I was saying earlier like is this coronavirus pandemic going to make us a united global community or is it going to rip us to shreds I think um as I was talking to my neighbor today about uh, the toilet paper shortage in and English-speaking countries she was laughing um she was she's in her 80s and um she was saying something about how um, it's just quite interesting how you see people react in times like this. Yeah, look, it's going to bring out the best and worst in people. There's no doubt about it. I just, I just find it. Um, hey, Reese M. So we've got Ruth Walton. He sounded ill to me, and then um, Ivory says Trump probably has it, and Reese says Boris Johnson looked ill too. Mm. He did look ill, but I, I still don't understand why he was. Is he, he was on record, wasn't he, saying that he didn't believe that the testing actually was effective in any way. And yet, yeah, you mentioned that yesterday. And I, yeah, I hadn't actually read up on that, but um, you did mention that yesterday. I mean, that's a pretty irresponsible statement by, by Boris Johnson, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I would imagine he'll just deny it. <laughs> I just... Never, plead, never plead guilty. So what else are we going to do while we're quarantined at home? I, I think spring cleaning the house and getting all of your things bagged up that you've wanted to get rid of for a long time. I'm wondering if, um, do you think all this online shopping, um, not so much sites uh, like Amazon, wait, 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 not, like, not so much sites like Amazon that need a warehouse, but in terms of sites like eBay where people are mailing from place to place, do you think that there's going to be a spike in that as well? I don't know if I trust those sites because, I mean, as I was going to say earlier, when it comes to people in quarantine who cannot work and have an income, what are those people going to do? So, I mean, one of the uh, the scams that used to often happen back in the day was people would send you empty boxes from eBay. So I, I wouldn't buy off of a, a site like that in a time like no. this. And I don't think we should. I think, you know, like I think it's important to try and boost our economies if we can by spending money back into our economies. But I mean, that, that is the same thing. Anything, when you buy anything, um, We need a talk lighter and a little talking stick. Because <laughs> oh, I was going to say, if, any, if, pen. if anything, don't you think that... If people are quarantined at home, they're going to actually be in their houses going, why the fuck do I have all this shit? It doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't, it doesn't add value to my life. Let's clean out the cupboards. We're going to have plenty. If we're all quarantined, we're going to have plenty of time to do some culling. Do you think that it could make people, this whole minimalizing, um, you know, living with the bare basics, not being so capitalistic, looking more at spending your money on spending time with family and friends, all that sort of stuff, do you think that, that's going to become a you know a more popular way of living. I mean, it already is, but do you think more people, the clutterers and the um, hoarders and the people that just think they need to have a shitload of crap in their houses, do you think that being stuck at home for two weeks, you'd be like, why do I have all those magazines? I've never read them. I haven't looked at them for a year. No, that's going to change nothing because 
hoarders are going to stay hoarders and people who declutter are going to stay decluttering. But the thing is, <laughs> come on, Freddie, show your guns. Oh, guns. You can be thumbs up, hit the thumbs up for Freddie if you want to see his guns. Type in chat one if you want to see Freddie's guns. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can see Freddie's guns whenever we go live. Yes, I am using you, Freddie. Show your yeah, guns. Aimless plug. Um, I was going Show to say. Guns. Come on. Your guns. Oh. I have little arms. Um, you have little arms? Are you shitting me? They're like a. They're small. I, I, my, I've got um, my a girl that gave me a massage once told me that my calf muscles are called leg of mutton muscles where you've got, it looks like a leg of mutton, I guess. Mutton? Yeah, yeah like a leg of lamb. I've got really big, defined calf muscles. And she's well, I want to talk about people who have not enough funds who need to be in quarantine and feed themselves. Because I, I said I want to talk about people who, who may be in quarantine and how they can feed themselves on little to nothing because I, I like I said I'm always one of those people who's like what if I had no money what if I, I I like like you what if you what if you didn't qualify for this steamer package and you needed food but you couldn't work because you're in quarantine what do you do or if you live in a rural area like like a lot of people in the world do and they don't have delivery services everywhere what do you do so I always you know, say. I think that there, I mean, I feel a bit safe where I am because I'm semi rural coastal. And I think people that are rural are, are probably going to be the less endangered because there's no one near them. But that that's to say that there's not a, 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 a stop in the distribution chain. If you're not able to get things to warehouses by you, then you will run out of things. I mean, you guys right now have toilet paper because you have less people. Um, but if you were in a pop populated area or there's nothing coming in, of course, you're also going to be affected by a shortage. So, I yeah, mean. That's why people need to stock up. But, you know, you don't need to stock up for, like, 20 years. Um, you know, you, but have... you obviously know how much you use. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say someone's being a hoarder when there might be someone who just has a, a large family who goes through a lot of roles. Or they might be buying. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that's hoarding. And I think that people that have got large families do need to stock up more than people who like me who don't have a family in my house at all except for my cat. Um, but a lot of the people that were buying all the toilet paper were buying a ridiculous amount, like a year's supply. Yeah. I'm responding to Ivory's comment, but dandelions is, are a diuretic. So you don't want to eat dandelions. Look at Ivory's guns, a forty caliber and a 9 millimeter. Yeah. But dandelions are good for the bees. It makes nice honey. But that's so true. There'll be a lot more foraging going on. People are going to be going, oh, I wonder if I can eat my indoor plants. <laughs> oh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I've had a brilliant story completely off topic. This print radio that I do, they, I do like a little show and at the end there's always a funny story. And I found the best one, this girl, a woman who was absolutely heartbroken when she discovered that her succulent was fake and she'd been watering it for two years. <laughs> How did you discover a plastic plant? But the headline was what made me laugh because it was like woman devastated after discovering the succulent she's been born. I could have been as Which is about to mow the lawn. We'll chow down on that grass, Groover. You could eat the root. <gasps> Hello, Shanna Banana, arriving with the most appropriate emoji for this subject matter. We've still got about, if we're going to yeah. stick hour freddie yeah. so um 10 minutes just over 10 minutes to uh talk about it, it looks like uh yeah our chat's having way more fun talking about your guns and and guns um yeah don't eat the toadstools um remember I it wasn't the cough that carried him off it's the coffin they carried him off in speaking of i need to cough just wait a minute well, don't remove myself from screen. Stream. I'm just going to mute. You just chat amongst yourself. Um, but yeah, don't talk, we don't talk about me like I'm not here. Says Shanna. Didn't I just hang on? You talk, Freddie. Yeah. Why did you turn off your camera? <laughs> um, this is making me laugh so much. Uh, well, as I was going to say earlier, I think let's see. 
for quarantine, um, a lot of you guys can help repopulate the earth by making more babies. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but actually, I think I probably would go and... <coughs> Sorry. Not really, I'm probably not going to clean things. Uh, I'll probably, if I was in quarantine, probably write more, perfect more of my craft, perfect more of the things I'm working on now that I always want to be better about. And I'm, I'm doing an online course at the moment, and I think there'll be a spike in that as well. People will, and also people watching how-to YouTube videos are going to start being a bit more do-it-yourself again at home and doing some projects. Preppers. People, what about people? Yeah, see, now this prepper thing, weirdly, like, and Shanna can vouch for me, when we first discovered YouTube, there was a dude, he's still around on YouTube channels, um, called Prepper, who, like Shanna and I, like to crack a few one-liners and muck around, but I never knew what Prepper meant. I thought it was like... He's a preppy. Um, and then yesterday, and he's Prepper 101, and then you explained yesterday. So I actually looked at some preppers, and they are, they're like zombie apocalypse people. Most of them, yeah. They're pretty hardcore, but they, they can also teach you a lot of things about, you know, being prepared for disasters and how to preserve things and, and a lot of, you know, DIY self-reliability it's, it's quite interesting I, I really enjoy watching a lot of those different shows i mean it's how i learned how to preserve a lot of things you know as they say preserve the harvest because I, i'm a, a very big gardener but i would say i give away 90 percent of the things i grow because i do grow so much um what but poke weed do you grow poke weed uh or is it poke pokey you know pokey weed like a pokey bowl no <laughs> I don't know what pokeweed is. Shanna says the introvert in me is focusing on the silver lining. I look, I to be honest, I'll be really bummed up if like ninety eight percent of the world's population is told to quarantine and where I live, we're not. Because I think it's awesome. You want to be quarantined? Yeah. yeah I because, because this is unprecedented in our precedented in our lifetimes. I'm curious to see. Like, I mean, look at us. We've gone live three days in a row now talking about this shit. People are fascinated by it, right? It's so novel and um, nothing we've experienced before. And I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Every day I wake up and the first thing I do is look at the the latest COVID-19 updates and not the death toll stuff, but just how it's impacting the planet. Well, I I'm one of those people who just worries about all the people who might pass away. Like I, I'm, I'm worried about like my grandmas. Um, you know, I, I would hate to be on the other side of the world and have something happen to one of them, and then have trouble to get home and and all that stuff. Um, Holy shit, Virgin, Virgin Australia um, Airlines in Australia are offering business class fares for as little as two hundred and fifty bucks. Ooh, to go where? Within Australia. Oh, because, you know, before this got really, really serious, I've always been one of those people who says every time there's a natural disaster, or not natural disaster, in times there's any type of disaster, it's the time to go visit the country. Because it, it, the likelihood of it happening again is not, and the prices are going to be dirt cheap because everyone cancels their things. And the people who are there will welcome you with open arms because you are bringing money to their economies and helping feed their families there. Yeah, uh, but Freddie, the issue here, though, is the whole fucking planet's a natural disaster at the moment. I know, but I was just thinking, like you said, Virgin Atlantic, because just a few weeks ago, I was telling my friends, now's the time we can go to Venice and finally book that five star for like a hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, instead of the, the, the 2000 it was last summer. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, Shanna's got a relevant. I bought some chocolate too yesterday, but wine, yeah, stock up on grog. Here's another thing. <laughs> Right. We haven't even talked about this, but Netflix is going to go ballistic. Everyone's going to watch absolutely everything they can on Netflix. I hate to burst your bubble, but if everyone is at home streaming, the data rates are just going to drop. So you're going to be having to buffer every five minutes unless you've got, you know, fiber optic cables. Which I've got. Oh, well, look, it's so Unlimited. So I'm going to add, like, yeah, TV show marathons, Netflix, that's another thing that we can do while we're quarantined. Can't believe that wasn't the top of the list because we've talked about that repeatedly. 
Uh, Richard's looking forward to testing how we can get by. I remember after a storm, we were that, out without electricity for four days. Have the best time ever. And I agree, like, this is a necessity, it's the mother of invention. You know, we are going to have to work out how to ration our food. We're going to ration our food a little bit more. We're really. going to have our meals go further. Not Even really. I read a tip yesterday, which I thought was awesome, um, which is if you're buying like canned tomatoes or canned corn, any tuna, whatever to separate the contents from the juice and then use the juice as a liquid to put with your pasta or your rice. So all that kind of stuff that you never normally do, you just chug it all straight well, in. Not, But in response to Shannon, I, I, I just think to myself, people don't really change. I mean, all this is going on, but I think we, we pretty much will stay the same. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to really change my life uh, that in big of a way, I mean, I, I guess if I have to stay home, I have to stay home. Well, but I'm, that's the whole point. That's what we're talking about. Is if, you know, if we're quarantined, it's going to change our lives. I don't know. The way where I'm like, yes, I'm going to clean the house. I don't like doing the dishes. I mean, come on. I'm not going to. Hey, hey, old woman. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. And, yep, an extra bag of M&Ms. That's, yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, double up on stuff, you know, get a little bit more. Well, and but you may think be, that you be, be, be. paper though. And now you're saying to get extra M and M's. What if there's an M and M shortage? Look at that! Look at Shanna's comment. You're sounding like Debbie Downer. And what did I call you to this morning before we went live? A sex kitten. <laughs> <laughs> you should know you can't let me just say whatever I want to say. <laughs> I'll in addition to that, in addition to that, what else did I call you? A Debbie fucking Downer, the exact same That's name. Right. Shanna and I are sisters from different misters. Ooh. I thought you guys were were polite because you were being a Debbie Downer earlier in our little chat thing on, on Messenger, I actually said, or in email, I told you to stop being a Debbie Downer. And a sex kitten. I did call you a sex kitten as well. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. But you are. You know it, though. Kind of made me laugh, though. Yeah, oh, but... woman um, still scheduled to fly to the UK on the twenty second. Uh, well, I mean, it's not what we've been saying. You know, it's all about hygiene, washing your hands, not bloody pashing someone. You know, there's. Well, I already that... know when people are like. And if you do crash it, you'll just be like Tom Hanks and. You'll be, you know, chucked in a hospital for a couple of weeks and, you know, it is it is the elderly, like you were saying earlier, Freddie, that are really going to struggle. But on the elderly, do you think craft is going to get popular? Are people going to start crocheting and knitting and doing tapestries? I did actually think about that, like we should do a little crafting. Quarant crafting, no, quarantine crafting with Tori and Freddie. Please write that down. Uh, uh, what was it? Quarantine crafting with quarantine. Tori. That's yeah. excellent. We're going to shoot a video out in the next few days because I've got crafts galore. I've got that, um, what's that called? Tissue paper. We yeah. can make pinatas. I've, I've been waiting to make a pinata since last year. We'll send the tissue paper here because um, Biscuit's favourite things in the whole world are string and ripping up paper. Oh, that my dog is like that. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, ironically, yesterday I had, I've been collecting um one of my favorite chickens' eggs to uh, to have her hatch, um, hatch the the brood this year, and um, I come downstairs this morning, and it looks like all of my eggs have been eaten. And I was like, but I wrote all over the eggs because you know you write on them with pencils, so you know not to use these ones, and you have the date on them. And I'm like, yeah. I did. and apparently the dog decided that he wanted to eat all the eggs on the table. <laughs> God damn it! Yeah. So annoying. It took me I'm a week. With ivory. I'm with Ivory. I, I'd be more worried about the hygiene of the person I'm squished up against. And even when, um, like on a plane or something, but also when everyone was stocking up on toilet paper, I put a rather scathing post on my Facebook page saying, how many people that are buying all this toilet paper do you think actually know how to wash their hands properly? Ooh. I know, scathing. Got a couple of minutes left. I think we've got some great ideas. With the crafting too, Freddie, that's again where this whole necessity is the mother of invention i mean i've got some clothes that i can still wear but they need buttons sewed on and things like that and i've never really got the time to do it because it bores the shit out of me but those sorry. sorts of jobs 
Can I stop you there? You're going to be home alone. Just be naked. Well, yeah, but I can fix the clothes and put buttons on them. And You'll do two things at once. You won't have to worry about the clothes. You'll give your neighbors something to talk about and something to watch. Well, yeah, because my house is a bit of a fishbowl. <laughs> so I'm wrong. It's pretty spacious. I saw a photo of a flight yesterday, that a plane yesterday that had absolutely no one in economy and three people in business, and that was it. One of the best flights I've ever took was Air New Zealand um, from LA to Paris. I think, I think I Richard's saying I'm not going to do my I'm not going to do my mending. We've hit an hour mark, mate. Are we going to sign off, or do you want? We have a, a few, we have we have some more things because we haven't talked enough about what people should do when they're quarantined and bored. That well, that uh, hello. I kept trying to reel that back in when you went off on your little storytellings. Well. Hey, this is a, a panel discussion. I, I get sidetracked reading these wonderful comments that everyone's writing. I love cream of wheat. Well, speaking of panels, does anyone in chat want to jump up and say good day for a second before we sign off? I know. I, I had a, a box delivered from a, a few weeks ago from New York um, of cream of wheat. Can't get it outside of the country. It's amazing. Oatmeal is another thing that um, oats, you know, like because you can make porridges and stuff and, yeah, that it will last a long time. I mean, that's the thing. It's getting things like rice and I'm not going to say my bulk bag of rice. I, I love rice and then I went keto. What kind of rice? Eat it. But I actually was like, no, if I make a curry or something and people come over for dinner, I still want to be able to cook rice at least for them. What kind um, of rice? I'll show you. You can tell me at the same time. I think it's jasmine I got it. I like a I like a round rice. I, I love rice as well. Uh, I love the, I love that Japanese style where you get the round rice and then you just break a raw egg in it with some seaweed and um, soy sauce. Basmati. Yeah. I'm I'm really like, when I went keto, I gave my sister all of the um, things that I couldn't have on keto, but I'm so glad I kept this. Isn't that a bit wasteful? You could have saved it for after the diet. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, well, yeah, no, I, I got rid of a lot of things that I would have been tempted to eat and use, but um, I kept this because, yeah, I cook a lot of curries, and if people come over, I, I don't mind eating curry with that rice. I'm used to it now, but I'd like my guests to have some. What do you eat the curry with, with the men? Yeah, I just do a keto flatbread, or I just eat it in a bowl. I'm happy doing that. But like I said, if it's got fresh parsley on top, yum. But if it hasn't, I'm like, I'll still eat it, but it's not the same. Garlic and the, the ghee on it, and it's delish. Now, this is another thing, too. Um, <laughs> people are going to start doing online exercise. Because I was thinking about that, too. If you're quarantined, people are going to start, like, doing, you know, walking around their houses to get their 10,000 steps. They're going to be doing online exercise workouts and things like that. <laughs> They can try yoga. I've always wanted to try yoga, but I, I've never felt it would work for me. But maybe I should try it. Well, this is I, it. I think we're all going to start doing stuff we haven't done before because we're going to be climbing the walls if we're not finding things to keep ourselves entertained with. And as much as I love a Netflix binge, there's only so much TV watching I can tolerate. So I've got lots of... Um, pictures and things that I'd like to do, you know, to hang on the wall. I've got those kind of jobs to do. And, yeah, getting a little herb garden going, um, which I, I do herb, grow herbs anyway. But, yeah, I think we are all going to start even, like, little projects that we've put away. Like I know a girlfriend of mine brought back from the Philippines a couple of years ago a little, it's a turtle and it's some little crafty thing that, you, you know, you sit down and do colouring in. People will be doing that a lot, I reckon. Hey, weren't you doing those? What were those called again? Where you fill, where you color in the the things to meditate, uh, mand mandalas or no? Yeah, no. But my um, I've still got coloring books. But my favorite one is one that's full of um, swear words. Oh, that would be the one. You're not gonna cook. I mean, you might like twat waffle and stuff to cook. And you're not gonna cook. I mean, you've got that beautiful kitchen behind you. I'll be doing a lot of cooking. For one or for the neighbours? No, I always cook. Um, well, it, I mean, it depends. If my neighbour's self-quarantined and she's getting low on food, I don't mind cooking and dropping food over. You accept food from someone else during quarantine. I mean, I wouldn't. About, but we just said right now, you said if your neighbor's getting low on food. 
I'd give her food and she would know that it would be perfectly fine. I've got little food prep gloves I can wear. I wash my hands regularly and it's cooked, it's heated, so it's not going to have any self-respecting germ living in it. Well, we never know. What if you're like, let me taste this, mm, and then you put it back in? I mean, look, I, my neighbour will have enough food. You know, people are smart. In two weeks' worth of food, you don't have to go and buy $1,000 worth of stuff. Yeah, but, I mean, that's – how often would you have to be quarantined? Because it only takes one person to infect everyone else again. So then do you have to I regal I don't know. You know, that's the thing. I mean, that's why I was saying yesterday, probably if you can try to budget for a month just, you know, to be safe. But I guess at some point if people are isolated, they're going to start dropping food packages like they have with previous pandemics. When have they ever done that? In previous pandemics. Yeah, where? Um, we've already got the Defence Force um, airdropping masks to hospitals and all these um, pop-up clinics that are happening all over Australia I to deal with the, the number of people. They've, they're have using Defence Force planes to drop medical supplies into regional areas. So it's already happening. Well, I, I that I can understand, but, I mean... Like, again, in the rural areas, I mean, how do they decide it? You know, I, I don't know. I don't trust because I didn't grow up in a rural area. I grew up in the city. So I don't trust really the rural areas because there, there is a lot of times where people are like, you're not from here, so we don't want to help you. You're not part of our community. And uh, so that that's what I would fear in the, the rural areas. But that's how they are in Europe a lot of places. I when but that's what I was saying earlier. Don't you feel that this is an opportunity for us to become a global community who gives a fuck about each other? It could be, but it depends on where you are. Um, where I live, it is quite... Um, oh, Verizon, um, that's a massive um, telco, isn't it, in the States, Verizon? Yeah, Verizon is a, a mobile company. Yeah, so they've sent everyone home from work. Um, latest updates. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, the PGA, US PGA, um, everyone has to be tested and they're going to still go ahead with the PGA but without any fans there. Are there even the fans? Trial, which is um, the Australian, like the National Rugby League, they are also talking about taking games behind closed doors and locking out crowds. Um, uh, the opposition party in Australia is telling our Prime Minister to not do the 750 um, stimulus. Race clubs, domestic I business clubs, 250. Tom Hanks was having a wonderful time before his diagnosis. So well, you know no, is I have that friend in China by Wuhan who, I, well, from the looks of his social media, he is still out and about eating in restaurants, having friends over, sharing meals. So I, I, I feel like everyone is kind of panicking a little bit. But I mean, at the end of the day, he's right there where it happened and he still hasn't gotten sick. So I think he's, more he's got good hygiene. Um, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have suspended all services globally. Oh, wow. That's a big thing for them. It's the first time since a 1957 flu epidemic that the religion has taken the step of barring church members from attending in person. See you, Richard. And Disneyland's closed. Um, there's now free national park entry until the end of the year in Australia. So mm -hmm. you don't have to pay to go into any na national parks. Um Portugal have closed schools and universities for a month. Iran has dug two football-sized trenches to bury coronavirus victims. Wasn't I talking about mass graves earlier? Yeah. Universal Studios closed. The Australian Grand Prix is officially cancelled and they're also saying the Supercars Grand Prix is going to be cancelled as well. Well, I, I read... Um, um the the British, uh, what is the BAFTA's website? Or not the BAFTA's, um, the British Union of um, like producer directors and technical artists talking about how Corona was going to affect the, the business there uh, for a lot of freelancers and how uh, globally- See, as well. Richard. Ciao, Richard. Sorry, man. 
globally as well that that a lot of productions are going to be halted and slowed down. A lot of movies are not going to be released because they can't be shown in movie theaters. So I, I reckon it, uh, entertainment for a while might go quiet and releases scaled back because well, if you go out in public and you can't have, I mean, you're never going to make a movie. Maybe the world will realise that movies is, you know, they're entertainment and so on. And speaking of that, Matthew Broderick's sister has got coronavirus and she's in ICU. Ooh. She's a reverend, Reverend Janet Broderick. But, I mean, I don't, look, I mean, I know the, the film industry is where you've come from, but at the end of the day, I mean, I don't care if movie production stops. That's not going to impact me. No, but it's entertaining a lot of people. It brings millions of dollars to locals' economies. It puts... Tens of thousands. It's the industry that does that, though, you know. This is that. This goes yeah, back to yesterday with the Tom Hanks story. It's like, well, yeah, that's just one industry that's going to be screwed. Yeah. I mean, Tasmania has every year an amazing festival in winter called Dark Mofo, and that's been cancelled. Um, yeah, all these things that are cancelled that entertain people, that people enjoy, put food on and, and this is why we're going to, this is why we were going to do the how do we keep ourselves entertained if we're quarantined or if we don't have anything to go to. And to be honest, I don't want to go to anything where there's a crowd Corey of people. And Freddie, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and kick the notification bell. That's how they're going to stay entertained. Tori and Freddie are going to go live nonstop. All right, we're going to wrap up shortly. We're down to, uh, we're already 15 minutes into the next hour. Um, just that comment by old woman, though, like um, with Boston cancelling their Irish Day Parade, who in this conversation right now in chat and you, Freddie, who would actually go anywhere right now where there's a crowd of people? Because I don't even feel that excited about going out to dinner and sitting in a restaurant with a shitload of people I don't know um, I don't, tonight. It, it doesn't faze me. It, it really doesn't face me because it's like being scared of the flu. I mean, I'm not going to, I'd probably be more aware of not touching my face, my eyes, ears, nose. Um, well, I've always know. got an itchy nose. So I'm fucked. I'm yeah, fucked. but that, that's the only reason why I think like a mask could, could help someone like that because you wouldn't be able to touch it because you'd be touching the outside of the mask. That's very um, wise advice. Maybe I need to get, maybe I need to fashion, maybe the face mask I got in my, subscription box the other day I can just wear that over my nose so I don't keep scratching my nose I don't know why it's always itchy it shits me what does an itchy nose mean you know how like itchy feet mean money or whatever no dirty feet no I know but it's just like an old way you know what it's an old way no, is it I thought it was supposed to be the left hand was meaning money if it itches having an itchy nose means you will argue with someone soon it has also been connected to meeting a fool or you are loved by someone. Oh, meeting a fool. Are you going meeting on a date tonight? Or argue with someone soon. You ready? Well, Show we've already been arguing. You called me a Debbie Downer. Is this hey. the Corey and Freddie? Ruth's got friends, uh, you know, musos. I mean, this is it. There's so many industries that are going to be affected. And I, well, my point about Dark Mofo wasn't so much about the entertainment side of it. It was... The reason they've pulled the pin is because our tourism industry is already fucking suffering because of the of, of coronavirus. And, you know, there's no point trying to put on a festival in an already very damaged tourism market. So that was the reason behind it. But my point was With there's a lot of movies we can watch. I don't, really don't care if we don't see a new movie out of Hollywood for the next year. Big I do. I mean, I enjoy movies. I enjoy television shows. Watch some old stuff. Go Go back to the days and watch some of those old movies you've never seen. No, thank you. I want new movies with bigger explosions and more action. <laughs> but you know, um, I'm not going to see the new Tom Hanks movie for a while, are you? What's kind of weird, though, is with all the deadly things in Australia, why are you guys so scared of coronavirus? I mean, you guys have spiders and snakes that kill everything. Nobody's scared. Well, I mean, there are probably some people that are scared, but why do you think anyone is scared? Well, Which is, I'm fascinated by it. I don't think I'm scared by it. I mean, like I said, even that 60 Minutes story, the Australian uh, one the other night, it wasn't, I mean, the, the stuff that you learn watching that is hardcore, but I wasn't freaking out. I was just fascinated. It's like so unprecedented in our lifetime. 
it just blows my mind that we're witnessing this. I think it's I don't think it's unprecedented in a lifetime. I think it depends on where you live and where you're from. I mean, I, I think back to the some of the places I've lived, tuberculosis in South Africa, HIV, um, there was Ebola, there was SARS. I mean, th there have been many pandemics around us that maybe have not touched our lives. But yeah, I mean, the same like I, I, so I lived through SARS, I saw the mad cow disease stuff, but the whole planet and all this updated information with technology now, like it, it is unprecedented. And yeah, you've lived in places where you've seen stuff. I've lived in places where I've seen stuff. But my point is, this is the whole world watching this thing unravel. And I think that's unprecedented. But I think that's because of our connectivity. It's not necessarily, because it, I said it's because of our connectivity. It's not necessarily because it's much more severe. I mean, it depends on where you go because uh, th there's articles where it's like, this has a 3% death rate. This has a, a death rate lower than this. I mean, it, it depends on wh what point of view you're taking, but Ivory is right. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Yeah, and, and I, I stand by what I say. I think I, I don't, if it's because of connectivity, well, then that makes it fascinating to me as well because... I think back to things like the Boxing Day tsunami and I'd never seen footage of a tsunami before. But because it hit tourist areas and everyone was filming it on their cameras, we got to see firsthand how destructive tsunamis are. And I think that this is because yeah. of where we are now in 2020 with our technology and our connectivity that, yeah, that's that's part of why I'm finding it fascinating. Yeah, um, going back to that tsunami thing, that was really weird. I remember that time when that happened. I didn't know that thing happened for a whole week. I would been I'd been so busy with work and not reading or watching TV that I remember someone mentioned to me. I was like, "What? I, I didn't didn't know what was happening." And then when I saw it, it was just ooh, all that footage, that National Geographic footage where they they compiled it together. I mean, I wonder if they'll do that for something like this, where we have a lot of footage of people in quarantine, you know, filming on their phones and yeah. it, it happened live, like. Yeah, and that's why I think YouTube channels, you know, a lot of people are going to be tuning in for hour-long shows, not hour and 16-minute shows. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, uh, it, it, it's fascinating, like, when you see all those videos now of, of those... Watch your hands. I agree, old oh, woman. But, yeah, people those... are going to be turning to, to online entertainment and YouTube channels where people are at home in quarantine teaching you how to make you know, a cup of rice, go, you know, feed the whole family and all that sort of stuff. That's all the stuff we're going to start watching. Like I said, I saw someone pickling hard-boiled eggs yesterday in readiness because she was saying that she and her husband are hardcore, like, full-on athletes and um, they they go through some crazy amount of eggs and they're like, well, if we get quarantined, we're not going to have fresh eggs the whole time, which I think you will because... Eggs normally, if you buy them at the shop, they've got like a use-by date that's a couple of weeks away. Um, but anyway, but she was just pickling this huge, big glass. But we're going to start seeing that, like, you know, people just being resourceful and... So your idea that the world is really going to change and that everything is going to, to disappear and we're really no, going to... Boxing Day tsunami, I'm talking about ivory. I hadn't... Um, yeah, the Boxing Day tsunami back in 2003 is the one that I'd never seen footage of a tsunami before and it was mind-blowing. I love nat watching natural disaster stuff. Why? don't know. I'm just fascinated by it. I'm just very conscious that the planet we live on and Mother Nature are way more powerful than we'll ever be. And because I'm a beach bum and love the ocean, I've always respected the ocean is far more powerful than I am. So, yeah, it was just something that struck a chord with me i don't watch it for the grimness of it i just i'm fascinated at this planet we're on it's because you have a beach house is what you're trying to tell us all <laughs> what's this even when i'm swimming in the ocean i'm mindful that because you I'm, have a I'm, beach I'm a tiny speck in a massive body of water that's way more powerful than i'll ever be or anyone will ever be and you've got those era kanji. That's why I said you're fearless. I, I would be too scared to go in the water there. I'd be like, you've got what? Saltwater crocodiles, jellyfish, Portuguese man of war, era kanji, and uh, stingrays and sharks. Well, a lot of what you just said, we don't have here. We don't have crocodiles, for starters. Uh -huh. um, 
the temperature where I am isn't really. I mean, there has been a white pointer sighted down my way once, but what's a white pointer? Um, huh? What's a white pointer? A great white shark. Oh, okay. The ones that eat humans. We've got a shark sanctuary at the beach where I live, but they're gummy sharks. They I don't. don't shark is. All right. So people so, rent at the shoreline to pick up seashells. I run far, far away to higher ground. Um, I'd be running. So, Ivory, are you saying you survived a tsunami, or that's just what you would have done? Because yeah, there's there's a probably the most famous footage is the dude that's just standing out there, just watching it coming towards him. This wall of water, it's terrifying, and apparently he survived it. Yeah, uh, the the I think the craziest one is the the elephants when they when the people were riding the elephants and the elephants felt the 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 tremors and just took off with the people on their backs, and they couldn't stop them. That, exactly. That, Here's old woman's tip about eggs, which is the rule of thumb in this house as well. Lying down very fresh. If they're standing up, they're okay. But if they're floating around, get rid of them. Yeah. But you have to also be careful if you have your I am. Sorry, Freddie. Absolutely. You have to be careful if you have your own eggs at home that you don't wash them because if you wash them, you get rid of the protective coating and they don't last as long because it opens up the, the shell to bacteria. Yeah, because so yeah. Yes, that, I am yeah. Tasmania. yes, I am in Tasmania, Ivory. How did you know that? I think I did talk about the that. Tasmanian there. devil? Huh? Have you ever seen the Tasmanian devil? Yeah. In the wild? My sister gave my um gave Biscuit a Tasmanian devil hand puppet for Christmas. No, I mean a real one. Yes, I've seen real ones. They 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 live here. Have you ever seen a dingo? Yes, but so we don't have dingoes in Tassie, but yes, I have seen the dingo. Aren't there supposed to be Tasmanian uh, tigers in, Tas in, in Tasmania still? No, like they're the ones that are extinct. I know, but aren't they always sorry? This is Biscuits, Tasmanian devil puppet. <laughs> she hates it. She attacks it. She drags it out into her. She's got a little enclosure. She takes it out there to kill it. But she loves being patted with it. But I, the first time I put it on the carpet to play with it with her, she lost her shit. But, yeah, so that's her little Tasmanian devil puppet, and that's kind of what they look like. That is what they look like. Are they really mean? They, they sound mean because the way they talk, the way they communicate, they've got really growly voices, but yeah. no, they're not. I mean, they, they, they do attack like any other animal, not humans, but... Um, they do fight like other animals, but it's just unfortunate for them. Like our ring, our, our, our brush-tailed possums, they just sound angry all the time when they're just chatting. I, it reminds me of the like seeing like a a, a honey badger live. Like look at these how old looking they are. Hey, Kylie, she's been listening and cleaning. Oh, thanks. You're for feeling that. much better today. Still not leaving the house, but that's good that you're feeling better. Hi, Karen H. Hello, Karen. I've already seen the Lo Looney Tunes one. Yep, exactly. And, yeah, Tasmania, the temperate part of Australia, although it was hot here yesterday. What's hot for you? Uh, it was only, well, it wasn't actually hot, hot. I mean, hot here for us would be 42, but um, it was it was just a standout hot day because it's cold today. And well, it's not cold, it's mild and raining. What is the and water cool? The, the, water's, the water's wet suit so temperature now, yeah. Even in summer? No, in summer it can get up to 24 degrees Celsius. Oh, I thought that was the weirdest thing is when I went to Cape Town and got in the water, it's like ice cold. Yeah, when it gives you a headache because it's so cold, that's too cold. Yeah, but that was in the middle of summer, like 42 yeah. degrees outside and ice cold water in the beach. Oh, right. Well, our beach is very shallow where I live, so the water heats up very quickly in summer. It's pretty cool. Thanks, Kylie. So let's wrap this up. It's lunchtime. I'm hungry and I've got so much to do before I go into town. And what's for lunch? Um, Probably a salad. Tuna salad, I reckon. Well, this is Tori and Freddie in the kitchen, so we need to know more. 
what, what are you going to have? Remember. Let me go to my meal plan. I can't remember what I'm having. I think it's salad. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's a Tori and Freddy show. Man, why is my name not first? <laughs> Friday. Man. Oh, I lie. I'm having um, uh, zucchini pizza boats with feta. A zucchini pizza boat. So it's a zucchini with tomato sauce and feta? Um, basically, I'll give you a quick rundown on how to make them. Um, you basically slice the zucchini in half. Get the seeds out. Don't throw them away. Then you put the zucchini boats on a baking sheet. Then you peel some garlic cloves, slice them thinly. You fry that up for a little minute or two. Add baby spinach and the zucchini seeds that you took out and you wait till that's all soft. Season it. Then you um, can use a marinara sauce, like a seafood sauce, but I just use a tomato passata. Put all that other shit on the top, sprinkle feta or goat's cheese on top and then bake that fucker. And then when it comes out, you just drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the top and some more salt and pepper. And How many calories is that? Um, do they tell me that? Yeah, I think they do. So they don't like counting calories, by the way. Um, yeah. Here's why. But... Um, KCAL, is that what it would be? 693, but that's for, hang on, I'll do one serving. Yeah, 693 for one serving or for the whole No, thing? that can't be right, KCAL, but they don't count calories on this, so I'm never going to be able to give you the calories. That's definitely not the calories. No, that's, that could be about right. Because I of don't the think so. Oh, maybe. I mean, because it's not about the, with um, – uh, keto, it's not actually about calories. It's about not eating carbs and sugars. So, yeah, it could be that much. But I just changed it to one serving and the calorie number hasn't changed. So I don't think that's accurate. Well, I think that whole thing is supposed to be one serving, though. No, it was. I had it set at two servings, thank you very much, and I changed it to one and it hasn't changed the okay. KCALs. So you're eating for two? No, that's just the automatic. That was just the setting for that particular recipe when I opened it up. It was on two people because I usually make two servings of most things, but something like this I won't because I'm just making it for lunch. Although I prefer their tuna melts, I might make a tuna melt. Who's eating with you? <laughs> I make two, so I've got an easy grab and go lunch or dinner the next day. Uh, that's what I do. Make everything in two and then you don't have to do it again. Exactly. We're on to the 12 billion calories. I know it sounded crazy, but when it was on one serving or when it was on two servings, it said 693. It was actually on four servings, sorry, because I've gone back. So <laughs> it had 693 for four and then I changed it to one and it still says that. So it's got five grams of um of carbs and that's the that's the figure i need to know because we try to eat less than 20 grams of carbs a day oh i don't know if i can do that i'm doing it but the thing is it was interesting yesterday just thinking about what i needed to buy for the house um the reality is if i did get self-quarantined i will need to go back to eating things like rice and pasta and noodles so i did buy some in case i need them but they're way at the back of my pantry and how about you just do a, a, a Tory in quarantine keto diet for one week and post a daily video of... It would have been hard, though, because nearly everything in keto, apart from yeah. cheese, which yeah. which keeps for a long time, and butter and... See, cream doesn't um, keep... I've got some UHT cream in my pantry now, but um, the majority of what we eat is fresh. So, yeah, I think I'll be... If I have to, and then I'll just go back to keto. If I, but I mean, I'm, I'm hoping I don't. Well, I kind of, in a way, I'd like to get quarantined, and in a way, I don't want to. So, I think you do want to get quarantined. You're like, I want to join the group. If everyone else is being quarantined, I want to be quarantined too. Well, we got in. I mean, I I called in my one place that I'm volunteering at at the start of the week because I thought I was coming down with a cold, and they were a bit disappointed in me. But then today, they've sent a an email out about the pandemic and they're saying don't you dare come in here if you feel sick um leave the station immediately if you feel unwell you make the decision whether you're healthy enough to volunteer or not like they've sent out this full-on 
thing, uh, but one thing that I found interesting is that they're going to now change the microphone socks on a weekly basis rather than monthly. I'd like them to be changing it on every shift. I'm going to buy my own sock. Well, shouldn't you just buy one of those uh, pop screens? Well, I, I, I'm not going in there. I do a lot of my recording for them for them from home now, which is awesome. But, yeah, it was just interesting that at the start of the week when I called in and said, look, it's not coronavirus, but I've got a cold and if you want me to record a show about health and I sound like shit, I'm not going to sound that great. That's so, the best um, there's, there also There's another person saying, don't worry about the hand sanitizers, put more soap. And I agree, like hand sanitizers actually kill your T cells, which make your immune system more exposed. I didn't know that. Hmm. And you can make your own anyway if you want to have hand sanitizer. Make some with some aloe vera gel and some rubbing alcohol or vodka. Uh, they said that not to use vodka for hand sanitizer. Hey. Uh, it was recent in the U.S. because a lot of people were using a, a certain brand of vodka to make their own hand sanitizer. And the company said, although we would love for you to use our product, we don't uh, advise you to use it in making your own homemade hand sanitizer. I'll just buy the vodka and drink it. It's probably better. Oh, look at this. I know that's U.S. Deep fat fried tempura battered fat back sandwich on a sesame seed bun smothered and covered in gravy comes with a defibrillator. Ooh, I would love that. You know that sounds good. And I want one of those butter pickles on the side or some of that uh, that good potato salad that you can find down there with the mustard. I think it's mustard and, and vinegar in it. We love the smiles. We love the stress relieving mechanism with laughter. And speaking of, we've gone way too long. I really, I've got so much study and writing to do, and I've got to go to town. I've got to go and get biscuits, supplies from my vet. Get to work living. And I've got to eat lunch. I'm getting another angry, angry again. You're hungry. Oh, what's the? Um, I'm going to have my breakfast muffins that I forgot. I didn't get to eat them before we went live. I'm going to have them for lunch with a little salad. They're okay. defrosted now, so I'll just chuck them in the oven and eat those. Well, Tori, this has been a wonderful show. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the Tori and Freddy show. <laughs> <laughs> I think now would be the time to start filling up every tank you can to to save on these cheap gasoline prices. Yeah, well, that's the other thing because um, I think people should be filling their cars up with petrol because, you know, if they do need to do a mercy dash to a hospital or something, that's a great sign-off. Peace, guys. Stay safe. And don't kiss a stranger. I am... Um, on that note, I caught up with some people yesterday and we always kiss each other on the cheeks and we were like, oh, we've got to stop doing this. But you can do everything else, though. Well, <laughs> no, I'm happy. I hate Space Invaders. But if one good thing's coming out of this that I'm really happy about is everyone's keeping their distance because oh. I can't stand people that stand too close. I, they don't know how to queue here in Europe. And that oh, is oh, or in Asia. Asia. It's just you just push to the front. Yeah. Everyone thinks if I push or I'm, you know, sealed to the back of them, I'm going to get there quicker. I can't so, stand being somewhere and feeling a hand on me yeah. and a stranger pushing me out of the way or so. It just, ugh, don't touch me. Real well, issue with bother me. But if we're in line and you're continuously just like right on me, I, I, I don't enjoy that as well. No. Nah. Yeah. Nah. People that invade other people's space, there's just no self-awareness and no regard for other people either, and they just annoy me. I know when someone's hovering really close to me that I won't ever be their friend in real life because they just have no awareness of themselves or other people and who wants to be around people like that? They're just trying to smell your pheromones. <laughs> do you like my glass? Oh, I do like your glass. You only have one? Mm -mm. Eight. Oh, did you see my mug today? Or, no. 
Tori and Freddie in the kitchen. Oh God, you've got so you've clearly got a set of all of these mugs. Well, they were the biggest because you know, uh, you know, I've got one which has suds in it. I just had that little one today, the Tiffany blue one. Most that's the, color. that's the color for our logo, Freddie. This color right here. Yeah, it's like your mixture in the background. It's also like my pen, if you didn't see. I did notice that earlier, funnily enough. Yeah. Um, why is that so cool? <laughs> Are we just going to show other turquoise things? My drink bottle. Hold on. My aspartame. Mm, not quite the same because I nearly put my these glasses up, but they're not really aqua either. Let's see. Do I have anything else to, to outmatch you? Oh, I do. The lid of my little um, my the lid of my container that I put, I've got suds in the sink until um that I dilute my cream and water together for my coffees. Oh, wait, your sink is. Are you on an island or is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. This whole setup's on an island. Oh, look how fancy you are. My liquid teaspoon. Come on, where's your aqua thing? My dad's bottle opener from 1970-something. I didn't know you liked turquoise so much. I do. I love it. It's my favorite color. I can show you. Um, um, my neighbor gave me this. Knife? Peach preserves she made. Nice. I don't, she likes to make a lot of, uh, uh, she takes whatever old fruit she has that she's bought. Yeah. And it's going bad. She's making it into to, to confiture and gives it to me. Not aqua though, mate. No. Break that game. I love you. We've got to go. When we say one hour, it doesn't mean one hour 36. Well, you kept going and the people were enjoying it. So what can I say? <laughs> You've always I've got been, the chalkiest look on your face. Like your resting face is just so naughty where mine's just resting bitch. Why and is mine naughty? It sucks because I'm not actually a bitchy person, but I've got the worst resting bitch face. And you, you just always look like you're up to mischief. I you am always a bitch, and you are always a bitch, though. So <laughs> those are true. <laughs> we both know that your face should be on my head and my face should be on your head, Freddie. Stop saying, stop telling the truth before you get in trouble. <laughs> On that note, thank you for those who've hung around till the very end. Bless you, bless you all. You uh, all Tom Hanks drew a bigger crowd, so this just shows how fickle the human race is. I'm glad that all of our regulars have come in and said good day. Bless you all. Um, Freddie, thanks again for just being you, mate. And everyone, if you could hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell your friends. Uh, if you've enjoyed the show, tell your friends about us. If you haven't, shut the fuck up. And that's all I've got. Yeah. It's been nice. It's been real. Speak to you soon. Peace, Our guys, everyone. Stay safe. And like we said. Stay safe. Oh, what? You know what we haven't done? The spin. What's been? Oh, no, but we're doing that on Sunday. All right, cool. Love you. Love you too. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.